Welcome to the Blame Game for the semifinals of the League of Legends World Championship. This episode is brought to you by Acer Predator. If you guys are at all like me and you like bringing your work with you or being able to game from anywhere, I highly recommend you check out their Helios 300 series laptop. I've been using it a little bit and it's absolutely phenomenal. Also, good Amazon reviews, sick. If you're interested in checking out the Helios 300 laptop or any other of Acer's product, please check the link in the description below. Even if you're not necessarily interested in buying something right now, it would really help me out if you just went down there and clicked on it and checked out some of their stuff. Anyways, on to the series. We're gonna be talking about SKT and RNG because that was the series that was discussed much more by fans. We'll kick things off with the individual who picked up the most criticism in the series with MLXG, and in particular for the Lee Sin pick in Game 5, which failed to get a lot of work done. It's important to look at the draft and why he even ended up on Lee Sin in the first place. There was a huge pinch in the jungle position where the big three, the most meta junglers available in Gragas, J4, and Sejuani were not available to him when it was his turn to pick. On top of this, SKT had intelligently banned away the other jungler they had seen out of him this series in the Nocturne. Now, I personally would have preferred a Zac pick or another tanky jungler a little bit more, but it's game five, one of the most important series of your life. You're probably gonna wanna play something you're 100% comfortable on, so it's no surprise to see MLXG default back to his Lee Sin pick. The game gets off to a really rocky start as Peanut completely out jungles him early on with a really intelligent level two slash level one gank down the bot lane and then continues to snowball pressure up on the top side. So Lee Sin is the one ending up playing reactively as opposed to proactively. And Lee Sin is much better when trying to force the action himself. The Lee Sin pick was definitely underperforming a little bit in the early game, but I think there were enough extenuating circumstances I would have trouble putting this all on MLXG if not for this one other play right here. SKT have a lot of map pressure with the NAR split push and are doing a good job baiting around Baron. However, RNG do an intelligent play by making sure they get mid priority, which pulls SKT off of the Baron. RNG also have a ward in the river, so they know that SKT is no longer a threat at all around the Baron. And yet for some reason, MLXG feels like he should wrap around to the top side of the map and hide in this tri brush. A lot of people tried to apologize for this play, but really there's no reason to be up there. He's not looking for a Baron steal. They know SKT is off the Baron. It is a huge mistake to try and find a pickoff in an area where you don't have vision control and don't know if you're on top of wards. So surprise, surprise, without his flash, SKT are able to wrap around on him and kill him. This is the exact moment when you knew SKT had the series in the bag and it came off the back of a really bad MLXG play. But it wasn't even the first time in the series he had problems with Baron. That actually starts in game four when once again SKT are pressing around Baron and he gets chunked out very heavily early on. I want to take this moment to talk about why Warmogs is such a great item when posturing around objectives because when you get chunked out in a situation like this, the item is able to regen you back up to full health without forcing you back into base, which keeps you active on the map longer. He doesn't have a Warmogs, but he does have a Soraka on his team, which is basically a living Warmogs. She's at full HP and mana, so she's definitely good to heal him back up, and yet for some reason he breaks away from her back up to the top side yet again and basically chooses not to activate his living warmogs. So not only is he low HP, but it also hurts his four man core who have no other tank or frontliner available to them. So when SKT starts baiting the Baron again, no one feels comfortable to walk up and face check it. And it gives SKT an extremely easy turn off of the Baron. MLXG is rightly praised for his craziness when it works. He's obviously one of the best junglers in the world. But that craziness sometimes works against him in situations like this, and it's very correct to blame him for some of these boneheaded mistakes. There was also a lot of talk in this series about Galio because he was picked all five games, and all of them by Faker. Now, some of these comments were somewhat memeing, but a lot of them were somewhat serious, and why would you give this away to Faker five games in a row? Before we dive into the specifics of this series, I want to examine some of the theory behind leaving up such a strong pick. RNG and SKT are effectively playing chicken because neither of them want to ban it. And this can work out well for RNG uh, three different ways. First, it frees up your bans to target some of the weaker members of SKT because you're not wasting a ban on mid Galio. You know Faker is gonna perform at the World Championship when it really matters. So you banning out Galio is not really limiting how effective Faker can be. You can also argue that Galio has slightly less individual carry potential in some late game situations. So maybe you're taking some power away from Faker, though obviously the champion's absolutely nuts in terms of its early game and map pressure. So it's, it's, it's a debate there. 
Second, because you are not banning it and you're not putting enough priority on it to first pick it, you can basically guarantee that SKT are gonna end up with it every single game. And lo and behold, SKT do in fact grab it with their first rotation every single time that they can. This is good because one, it forces SKT to use one of their early picks on a champion that you don't necessarily wanna play and allows more priority champions to fall through to your second pick phase. Additionally, you know what SKT will be playing in the mid lane so you can comp around it and make sure you have picks prepared to play into it. And the third and final potential upside is that if you are able to beat SKT playing Galio, you might be able to force them to ban it or that they continue not to ban it and it can fall to you at a lower position in the draft where you can grab that pick at a much easier time. Now in terms of the series execution of this strategy, I actually think they did a decent job with it because they were able to beat Faker on Galio two different times. And yes, Faker absolutely smashed this series, one of his best performances we've ever seen, and Galio was a huge problem in some of these games. But like we said before, Faker's the best player in the entire history of the game and he's looking completely on form. So yeah, he's gonna smash this series no matter what happens. And it's hard to say how much of that was the Galio pick and how much of that was exactly just Faker. I think overall the strategies and way that they tried to play around the Galio pick were well thought out and decently well executed. Personally, I don't really like this strategy, but I don't think that the evidence was conclusive at all for people to be able to say 100% this was a terrible idea. The High Five Comment of the Week Award is brought to you by my patron, Ernest Williams, and goes to RTDG13. Overall, just the best execution of the Galio in five games showing up because he was able to meme the analyst desk a little bit. And I'm always down for when people meme my comrades. That's gonna do it for this week's Blame Game. There's only one series left at this year's World Championship. I know I'm personally really excited about it. I know some people are a little poo-pooing it because it's uh, all Korean finals in China, but I think based off what we've seen out of SKT and Samsung so far, we're gonna have a really fun series on our hands. So check back next week for the blame game on that series, and I'll see you guys then.